keep it real with ya. Um, but I did also, as you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, I know a lot of you are probably from the asexual video, but prior to that, I've made videos about my identity and like things that are, I guess, wrong with me. <laughs> so one of the things that's wrong with me is my chronic illness, paradoxical puborectalis syndrome. Um, and what that is basically is that the, my pelvic floor muscles are way too tight all the time which causes problems. Like I can eat a whole 30 vegan diet and my pelvic muscles will still not let me like go to the bathroom. Um, and that's not sexy or anything. Um, I'm, I'm painfully tight all the time. And so I had a couple of days where I was in a lot of pain and her family was very nice about it. She was very nice about it. Um, she was like, hey, if you need to lay down, like be honest. And I didn't want to be honest because the week before I left, I went to the hospital and I got um, these injections from the proctologist into my muscles that was supposed to relax my muscles. And they didn't. <laughs> they, they didn't work at all. And I'm going to tell them this week when I talk to them, this shit didn't work. Um, so I was in pain and they were really nice about it. Um, they even went to like the drugstore or the pharmacy and they bought me some muscle relaxers, um, lidocaine ointment. And her mom even called her doctor friend and was like, what do we, what, what should we give her for this? And they got some other thing that I don't even know what it is, but I think it's specifically for people who have um, pelvic floor issues. So like they helped me buy all types of drugs that made it through the TSA and back to America. So they were very, very kind about it. And I think it's because my friend also had like a chronic illness. And so they were like, you know, don't worry about it. You know, we we are going to be very accommodating for you. We do it for her. We'll do it for you. Um, so that they were very, very sweet about everything. And so it was good for me because I'm always very embarrassed about my pain. And I don't want to be inconveniencing anybody. Um and they were like, like towards the end, they were like, you know what? If we don't make it to everything, that's fine because we want you to come back. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you do? <laughs> and they were like, yeah, you'll be back. You'll be back. Oh, you may not get to see the castle today, but you'll, you'll see the castle when you come back next year. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Which just really made me feel good to be like, welcome back the next year. Hey, y'all better not be fighting over here. I'm trying to record a video. But that was very sweet. And... Um, they both, uh, the whole family was very excited to tell me about like the history and the culture and everything. They told me about like when the Spanish came to Mexico and like all the fucked up shit they, they, they did. Um, they also told me about how her, her mom's boyfriend was from, was from like this, like more country area called Hidalgo. And they were showing me pictures of it and everything. They were like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And like, they were showing me like how they prepared food and like, you know, with the horses and the ranch and all of that stuff was really cool so what I did because I went out with my friend and I was like oh I want to go to like some bookstores because she's very into thrift stuff and cheap stuff too so I was like yeah let's go to like some cheap bookstore and get some books and we got some really cool books but let me show you um Hidalgo I actually went and bought a book on Hidalgo <laughs> and it's mostly a picture book but it has like all of that like all of these different pictures of like the city, of the countryside, of everything. Oh, they gave me a they gave me a library card. This cute. Um, the countryside, everything. It has like little bitty explanations of why things look the way they did. And her mother's boyfriend was super excited when I brought it home to like show me the places and like, oh, this is where we are and um this is where the mines were when the Spanish were mining for gold in Mexico and all of that stuff. So it, he was really, really excited uh, to tell me about all the history. And I was really, really excited to learn about all the history because um, I'm a big nerd, too. I actually and me and my friend, she also loves horror movies. So we got to watch some horror movies. We watched The House That Jack Built which I've been trying to watch forever, <laughs> but it wasn't showing on any of the streaming platforms. And I did not realize how pretentious the movie would be. I thought it was gonna be more about like all the murders, but it was very much like all of this, like Dante's Inferno allegory nonsense that I didn't feel like dealing with. Um, and then we watched the most recent Candyman, which was okay. You know, it was just standard generic horror film. 
But I also got these, um, this book, Pedro Paramo from Juan Ruflo, Ruflo, Ruff, Ruffo. Um, but apparently he is a very popular writer. And so when we were asking the people there about horror books, they recommended that writer. My friend also got me this book. That's a good horror book. This is also by, um, the, the one man who's very popular. So I got multiple books. She also gave me this book because I'm also wanted to, you know, help with my Spanish through stories. So basically 16 famous Latin American stories. And that is all very cool. And I'm excited to read it. I think I do use link, um, by a uh, Stephen Kaufman. Um, so I am very much interested in learning languages through reading books. And I just got back from the Japan festival where I bought hella books, <laughs> hella books and hella Japanese movies. Cause I had some Tomie movie there. I was like, Ooh, I'm buying it. But, um, yeah, so I got to do all of that. I got to see some beautiful sights. I got to see some ruins of a pyramid, which was really, really awesome. I'm happy the government decided to preserve it because if it was America, we wouldn't have done that shit. We would have tore it all down and then built a museum on top of it. Like, this is where the pyramids used to be. <laughs> um, so I was really happy to see that. I was really happy to eat, um, you know, some cheap, good food from like some small, like hole in a wall type places that only my friend knew about where other people didn't really go. I got to watch people prepare food and you can even, this is one thing that get me that made me mad. Cause the, the, my favorite Mexican restaurant here, like they do not customize shit. Like they make the food, how they make the food. And if you complain about it, they're like, this is just how we make the food. But like when we were there, Everywhere we stopped, even if it was like a small little stand where they were making food, she would ask them to customize it so that it didn't have so many like super spicy things or like a lot of onions or anything that would like upset my stomach. And it was funny because, oh, hey, cat. It was funny because she was she kept telling them um, when she was customizing it like, oh, she said it in Spanish. So I, I'm not doing direct translation, but basically being like, you know, oh, my foreign friend, her stomach can't handle authentic Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you ain't have to tell them all that. <laughs> you you know what I mean? But they were like, oh, okay. But they were super nice about it. And they customized the food. And they didn't put so many this or that on it. And I got to try some weird things that even some uh, Mexican people probably would be like, mm, I don't know about that. Um, but I got to try a bunch of different foods. And even though it, would, it did fuck my stomach up <laughs> in terms of like going to the bathroom and stuff, I was still very excited to... Um, try these new unique flavors and most of the things that I had I really really enjoyed and I thought were amazing um like I said the pollo ranchero was really good their fried chicken not so good and uh it was basic fried chicken like it's the type of fried chicken you can get anywhere you know what I mean it, it wasn't super flavorful but um Everywhere I go, I always want to try their fried chicken to see if it's anything good or if it's better than what we eat. Because, like, so far, like, when I was in Japan, their fried chicken was really, 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 really good. Um, but Mexican fried chicken was okay. It was okay. We got it for a good price, though. We got it for a good price. There was a lot of different, like, snacks that were good. There was, like, there was these desserts. My friend got something that was supposed to be, like, a snow cone. But there was all kind of chili powder and, like, hot sauce in it. And I was like, sis. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, this, I don't think that this is what was intended. That's not what I thought you were going to say when you said snow cone. Where all this chili powder come from? But they put chili powder on everything. Everything. But it was all um, really delicious. And I even started to enjoy, like, some of the more spicy things that I was eating. Even though my stomach got mad at me about it later. But um, what else can I say about the being there? I didn't get to speak um, as much Spanish with strangers, uh, but I could understand sometimes when, cause you know, like I could not do like the direct translation word for word. My friend, she's an interpreter. So she's really good at the direct translation. Um, I don't, I'm not really good at translation word for word, but I can kind of understand like what the meaning of the sentence is. Yeah, I better get out of my medicine. Uh, so like sometimes, you know, she would tell people that I'm from, you know, the United States and they'll be like, oh, what city are you from? Uh, not city. No, it sounded like city. But um, I tell them like I was from Tennessee and some of them would like be like, oh, I know what that is. And then some of them would be like, oh, um, you know, I would try to tell them things like, oh, Jack Daniels whiskey <laughs> and stuff like that um to tell people but most of them understood like what Tennessee meant and everything like that 
And so that was really cool. But like, yeah, yeah, they were very, very nice. I think some of them even liked the fact that I was taking pictures and recording them. <laughs> um, she said that a lot of people were just impressed that someone from another country was interested in coming to their place specifically because it, it's, it is, it is more of a, um, off the beating path place. Like, cause if somebody were to visit me in my town, like I, I probably take them to where the places they were expect to be going, you know, like all the famous places is where they would expect to be going. Um, unless they were a friend who I knew was just really interested in like how I lived my life or how I grew up, I would take them to all the tourist places. But like, if I took them to like some of like the poor areas and been like, we're going to eat some gas station chicken, you know what I mean? You know, the type of places where homeless people are hanging out, um, right outside the gas station door and you got to walk by them and talk to them if you want to eat something good. Like I, I, I wouldn't usually take people there because they'd be freaking out and they'd be scared and they think it's super dangerous. But my friend, like her, her family or rather her mom's boyfriend family had been there for like many generations and, they were um, very well known in the neighborhood. Everybody knew knew them. It was very nice. I didn't get overcharged. I didn't get scammed. I didn't get robbed. I didn't get accosted in any way. Like even when I was alone, you know, I just said hello to people, and they were very, they were very nice. Or they, were, you know, so it was really good. I also got to meet her her mom's boyfriend's parents, um, and. Um, guess how like her auntie I guess would be and they lived in the same place so I really wish American America allowed people to build houses the way they want to because the way that they built their houses there was like you get this plot of land right and you do like let's say you do a big square I'm doing it wrong okay you do a big square right you can have one house in the back that's like her his like his mom and his sister and his dad's house and they have all their rooms and it's like, what, two stories or whatever. That's their whole house right there. And then in front of their house is his house, which he was building on it. He was building up. So it's got like three or four floors at this point. But that's his whole thing. And all of this is within the walls. And then the door, you know, closes like a gate, but a solid gate, not a see-through gate. So I could come out of her house and go into her grandparents' house and talk to them without technically ever really going outside to where I'm exposed to where people can see me, which I thought that that was really, really cool. And it made it feel even safer at night, especially because I was sleeping. The first night I slept was um, close to the front, their front door. And in, in anywhere else, your front door would be where the person would kick it in if they're going to break in. But there's so much, but there that's not the front door of the whole area. The whole area front door was farther away and much harder to, um, much harder to break into. So it was much, much more safe there. And I really enjoyed how they built it. And people got the color of the houses, people in the neighborhood colored their houses, whatever color they wanted to. And they could have as many like, you know, buildings on the lot that they wanted to, cause that was their area. Whereas in America, you know, they, they're really big on the whole single family unit stuff. Like they really want people to have houses like that, which makes it very difficult to, and to, um, have your own thing. Like you can't really design your house in the colors that you want or the way you want, because if you ever want to sell it, no one will buy it. I mean, if I was ever to like settle down somewhere, I'd probably go after those houses that are like built really crazy because at least it'll probably be cheaper to buy and it'll be something unique, you know, but I really like that. We walked fucking everywhere. My calves are super, uh, they're not sore, but they're like really solid, like the muscle and everything. Um, I did try to avoid stairs because I'm, oof, those stairs took me out. They took me out. But um, uh, also the water there wasn't good. So I had to buy bottled water all the time or get water from their house because uh, they filtered it. But I think what helped me the most was having Gatorade. I bought a lot of Gatorade there because it was just way more hydrating than water for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but if we were ever out somewhere, I would usually buy um, bottled water. And before I and before I end this video, because I only have so much time and so much battery, we went to some place basically called Freaky Plaza, and it was basically where all the weaves hang out. <laughs> now, weaves, you know, I, I you know I love you. I got love for you. You know, I want y'all to have your own things. I want you to have your representation. I want you to be able to buy all the Naruto shirts and um, uh, figurines that you want. 
But why the fuck is y'all always trying to build like huts? Like why do y'all motherfuckers always try to live in some place that looks like a fucking hideout? You know, you don't have to have a hideout. You could have a regular store where your weeb shit is bought. But they built this whole little like hole in the wall hideout place that's super packed. And you know, and I love y'all, but a lot of y'all don't shower. A lot of y'all don't shower and you don't wash your hair. So all of y'all crammed into a small place did not smell good. It was very overwhelming. Um, yeah, it was where you could find all the like figurines, anime, manga. There was anime playing on the TV screen. Was Bleach was playing. Um, and then they had uh, their Japanese restaurants on one floor. And um, as somebody who's been to Japan who likes Japanese food, I don't understand why my okonomiyaki had to have hot sauce in it. Why was it spicy? Mexican weebs. Why was my okonomiyaki spicy? <laughs> it is supposed to be cabbage with like sauce and with okonomi sauce and mayo. What? Where the hot sauce come from? That's not part of the recipe. <laughs> um, but they had rum. The ramen was good. Uh, the takoyaki not so good. It's probably because it was like imported and frozen or whatever. Um, and it was, it, I feel like, I swear, like, I feel like weebs everywhere are like the same people because it literally just felt like I was at an anime convention in my own city because of the way people were dressed and everything. Um, naturally, you had your hentai pillows on sale that I was kind of like, this is uncomfortable. Um, I, I do like that weebs have a place to go and like meet other weebs. I just wish that there was open air and ventilation in those places <laughs> because bruh it's like it was hot it was hot too so it was a hot stink <laughs> and, and I told my friend after she came back from the bathroom I was like girl we gotta go she's like you don't want to look at no stuff I was like nah she was like they got video games I was like I need to I need to air I need air I need to get out of here and breathe what the hell um but it was it was crazy and I I mean I probably would have bought some stuff but I just could not stand to be in that space that's so tight and so crowded for so long like the crowd thing really really messed me up so um yeah and I guess that's why they call it the freaky plaza because they was I think it, I, I think it would be better if they didn't sell hentai shit like so openly in there that it might not look so freaky because everything else is just weeb shit and now I'm fine with that. But I think that that's all I can think of now. I'm just giving you guys the quick and dirty rundown of how everything did. Um, her parents also helped me try some like Mexican alcohol. We, we did shots. That was really nice. Um, they were more fans of the... Um, but it had like Jose Cuervo and stuff too. But her, her mom was more fan of like the cream liquors. So like things that um, had good flavor. Not just the hard and dirty stuff. Um... But they were really nice um, for the Dia de Muertes. Her grandparents had like a, a huge ofrenda. Um, it was really, really beautiful. They had all kind of food. They had tamales and, and you know what I mean? It was like, uh, it was so much food. I'm like, who's going to eat all of this when it's done? Um, but they had like their grandparents' photos and the great-grandparents' photos up there. They had the tamales, they had the apples and um, panda, muerte, panda muerto and like all of that stuff. It was really, really cool. Um, her grandmother was really, really nice and she wanted to talk to me, but I can, I got really nervous because she was super, super nice. And she was like hugging me and like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. You have to get better at Spanish so we can talk. And everybody's like, she will talk to you for hours, which I love talking to old people. Don't get me wrong. I talked to an old person for hours too. I just didn't speak enough Spanish, but I honestly felt like if I did sit down and talk to her, she would probably just talk for two hours and I probably would just be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But they were all, all super super nice more little story they were all super super nice they want me to come back i'm thinking probably coming back with them for christmas because i mean shh, not christmas this year christmas next year because uh I, I gotta do the plane ticket but um because i mean i don't talk to my family no more so might as well spend christmas with somebody else's family that i like better um if I can swing it, depending on what's going on, I might try to come more in the summer because that's when they go off to the ranch and I really want to ride horses and I want to see how they prepare food because they do the thing where they like dig a hole in the ground and they cook the food underground and stuff. I really want to see that. That looks really interesting and fun. Um, and they invited me out there. They was like, oh, you should come. You should come with us, which is which my friend was like, oh, they really like you because they invited you there and they wouldn't usually do that. Um 
So it's really, really um, nice. It was really fun. I had a great time. I barely checked social media while I was there because I was so interested in everything that I was doing and everywhere I was going. Even when me and my friend got lost, I was still having a good time. She was a really, really great host, a great friend. We had a lot of deep conversations that I really, really enjoyed. I had deep conversations with her. I had deep conversations with her friend. I had deep conversations with her parents, you know, whatever we could get out of there, you know. And like when I left, you know, they hugged me and were like, we really want to see you back on Christmas. Um, and, you know, like, you know, I got their WhatsApp and, you know, so they're like, you know, let us know when you get home. Like they just were really, really friendly and welcoming. And they were like nice about everything. And obviously this is my friend. So we're going to keep in touch anyway. But um, I'm happy to keep in touch with them and to make visiting them like a regular thing. And to get my Spanish to a good place where I can have like, you know, full fledged long conversations with them. And it's not just me trying to piece together words. You can only do so much when you're self studying a language, okay? Give me a break. I'm trying. <laughs> um, but um, it was just a really, really great time. And I can't wait to go back. Hopefully, I'll be in better shape so I can climb the stairs and take less pu public transportation. But. We'll see how shit goes, especially with my new job, you know. And they kept talking about like, oh, oh, if you want to move down here too, that would be great. <laughs> so, you know, maybe I'd go stay in Mexico for a year. Maybe I'd go to Japan for a year. Who knows? I had a similar conversation with a Japanese man I met today about, you know, going to Japan and, um, you know, like meeting people and talking to people and having a great time. I just really enjoy talking to people who are different from me learning about cultures that are different from me, learning about history that is different from me, like real history, not just the nice things that people want to hear, but like the real shit that went down. Like one of the books I bought from Jap uh, the Japan festival was about the war in Cam Cambodia, you know, and they were like, Oh yeah, that that's real history. And I was like, that's what I said, <laughs> but, um, really enjoyed it. Super grateful for the experience. Super grateful that I didn't let my pain and anything stop me from going there. Super grateful that my friend and her family were kind enough to deal with me through the pain and like take care of me when I couldn't move and help me buy like uh, medication. Her mom even took me to go get a massage uh, for my back and my butt to help with like pain and everything. And it was a really, really great time. And there's more stuff that I want to do down there. So, of course, I'm going to be going back. Um, but I'm just really grateful and I feel very, very happy that I got to have this experience because I, you know, have wanted this experience for several years now and I finally got to have it. So that's a huge accomplishment for me. Like I, the entire week, actually, I, I was writing in my accomplishment journal of all the things that I got to do. And I know my trauma therapist tomorrow is going to be really happy to hear about what a great time that I had there. Um, and hopefully this good feeling will last for many, many weeks and nothing, nothing goes wrong to make me stop feeling good. Cause I really feel good now. Um, despite the pain I usually feel, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy and grateful for the experience. So Alex, <laughs> I know you watch my videos, but I think you're a few videos behind, but by the time you get to this video, I just want to let you know, thank you for giving me an amazing experience. Thank your parents for giving me an amazing experience. I'm super grateful to have someone like you in my life. Um, and I, I hope everything gets better for you and everything gets better for me. And one day we are going to, you know, we're both gonna have enough money and you know, we're, you and me, we're gonna go to a, a, a fancy beach with room service and all, all the amenities and we're gonna have an amazing time. And I'm, I'm very excited for that, but I just know it is coming. It's coming. We're going to, we're going to do it together. Um, but I love you, Alex. And I also love you viewers, subscribers, people who comment on my videos, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. I love you guys. You're really awesome. I love talking to you. Um, I love hearing your opinions on everything. Uh, if you guys have any other questions about anything or comments or, you know, maybe one of you guys is from that area. I don't know. Um, let me know down below. I'm excited to talk to you guys. But until then, like I always say, you know, take care of yourself, drink your water or your Gatorade. <laughs> um, take naps, you know, love on yourself. If you're struggling, you know, just take it day by day. Just keep it pushing because you never know when you might get the opportunity to have something like what I just had. I would have never imagined. 
that I would have been there and had that experience. And I did because I kept it pushing and I kept reaching out to people and having connections with people. So you guys just keep doing, keep doing what you're doing. And I will see you guys next week. Love you guys. Bye.